All right, I got a couple more small changes I want to go over. So uh, I don't remember why I set that to um, true, but this, or sorry, false, but this should be true. You want it to overwrite um, if it's not testing. And the reason for that is the get calculations populates that file and um, I want to overwrite it with the um, minute bar or the flat file data that's more accurate I think than the uh, what the get calculation script does so overwrite should be true if it's not testing so this is testing this is not testing overwrite should be true that's that uh, next thing is um, this takes a while this uh, API call where it keeps well it's multiple API calls for each ticker to get the market cap I wish they had one API call. Um, maybe they do, or maybe there's one somewhere, but I couldn't find one to uh, get the market cap for all the tickers uh, the day before. So it takes a while, and if it crashes, then you're kind of lost that information, and it takes like a long time with this delay, and I think you should have a delay so you don't hit the API too much, uh, too quickly. But... Uh, but yeah, it takes a while, and if it crashes, then you lost all the information. So I'm basically making a directory with the current date inside that folder and saving each output or each API call output um, at least. Uh, wait, am I saving? Yeah, I'm saving the whole output to um, to the folder in case I need to access those if the whole thing crashes. Uh, and that way, if there's an issue, you don't uh, have to rerun it. And, it takes a while so that's that so save ticker info or no um, save info per ticker so that's that I won't talk about the override thing okay and last thing, um, there was an issue with the scanner. I have some commented out stuff. I just want to talk um, about that really quick. So, and comments. So basically, um, I wanted to be able to test, like send some test messages with, without um, basically running through the whole kind of system without uh, having a mock server. So one quick way to do that is I like, comment this out, comment this out because it causes uh, some issues with, um, or, or the, the program just immediately quits if you, if you don't comment that out. So, um, and then here's this at the end of each second or loop iteration, which it happens, this runs every second. Um, it, it'll send a message and this is basically, I'm, um, I created my own WebSocket message constructor cause that's what this thing's expecting um here i haven't commented out so just basically overwrites the other one and all i need is a symbol high and low that you pass in and set so that's that um and then it calls handle message which sends it over and over um this is just some logging um some logging here and here is the issue which i'll get to in just a second i want to see if there's anything else nothing there and nothing there it's just formatting okay so here's the issue that i fixed basically if the number that gets hit is above your um, lower level, so there's multiple levels, there's 2%, 5%. So if it's above the lower level, let's say it's 5, um, it would hit the target, but then it would never give you the warning for the higher level if it never got to the higher level. Um, and you might want both, right? So you might want the target at the lower level target hit and then the warning at the higher level so that what I had before did not do that so I removed that flag um, I uh, removed that um, condition there and then how I'm doing it is I'm saving these as separate variables um, instead of the same name and then the, oh, these are just changing that to update the new name but the real um, thing is we're taking the max of the uh, warning high indexes or warning low and comparing it to the max of the target low and if it's uh, greater than that 
um, then we want to send the message. If we if it's not, then that would prevent it from sending for the same level a warning and a target, I believe. So um, that's that. All right. And I found one other issue. Basically, this these target indexes. Um, this will be if a warning hits and a target doesn't, it'll basically this will be a um, this target high index, target low index will be an empty list, and that throws an error for this. So, a few ways you could deal with that. Easiest way I think is just set this to negative a list of, with negative one in it, and that way um, this will always be higher. So it'll always work. Another thing I wanted to go over is uh, this. I did not make any changes, but I uh, just recently found out that you do not need to uh, extract uh, compressed files, the tar GZ files that I'm extracting here, to be able to load them with read CSV. All you do is just put the file path of the tar GZ within the um, read file or sorry, read CSV function, and it will just read it and deal with the uh, the extraction itself. Another issue I found is when um, a warning was hit that a target would not be hit after that. So um, the problem was right here where I'm assigning um, target hit dictionary to both of these. Um, it's just assigning the object, not like a copy of the object. So, um, in warnings hit, we have this same object. So when this got gets modified <clears throat> up here, it'll it'll then modify. Uh, it will modify the targets as well, and we didn't want that. So, um, easy fix, which also cleaned it up a little bit clean up the code um, is to just try to get um, the object at this uh, location with this key and then if not assign it to an empty, empty uh, dictionary and then we can copy that either the empty dictionary or the object that way it makes a copy and it's not uh, the same object um, that is being used in both places so um, that's that and then we can get rid of the all this if it exists, if it doesn't exist, assign it to an empty object because that's all being taken care of right here. And then uh, one other thing too, which I didn't change, but just something to think about is uh, we have this interval every 15 minutes. Um, maybe we do want to get warnings um, in the next 15 minutes that because if the uh, calculation changes in the next 15 minutes and the targets change, um, maybe we want to reset those here, just like we're, we're resetting these. Uh, maybe we want to um, refer to them up here and then reset both of these variables. Where are they? Warnings hit and targets hit. The same way we're doing uh, the targets and warnings. All right, I'm going to go over a few more changes, uh, problems I noticed. Uh, one thing is I just added... Um, what I was talking about before, where I'm resetting the warnings hit right here. That way, after the 50-minute inter interval rolls over, it will still warn you, but it won't um, give you alerts on the targets. Um, obviously, that can be adjusted however you want. Um, there might be an issue here since there's two things writing to warnings hit. There's that. And there is the logic up here, which I've also changed, um, which I'm going to go over because I had a bug. Um, and honestly, the code was a little bit uh, messy um, and weird. So um, I'll go over that in a minute. But uh, th this is being written to multiple places in a thread um, of this periodic task function is a thread that's running. And... Um, and also up there. So I don't think it would really be an issue based on how it's set up, um, but there's ways you can deal with that. You can use timestamps. 
Um, instead of just like a one saying it got hit in this interval, you could use timestamps and figure out the time difference and then adjust that in different ways. Um, so you're not like overriding, you're like um, more so adjusting or pending. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave this how it is. I think it's fine how it is. Uh, and it would be pretty rare that would be an issue because it would have to be literally that second and then that this gets overwritten and then there's an issue where it's getting written to in an alert at the same time. Um, and I really, I don't think that, yeah, I don't think it's a problem, but, uh, Anyways, um, yeah, there are ways to deal with that. Other than the timestamps, you could use like um, locks and stuff like that. Um, there's different ways you could deal with it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I added just some comments. That this, I have some code in here. I have a for test or is testing, which is really like a mock. It uses all mock stuff, and then I also want to be able to test production. Um, I know it's really a sloppy way to do it, but um, I want to like run through production as through the whole flow as much as possible. Um, so I have some test code in here that does that. Basically this will make sure that it, uh, I can hit control C to get out. That's all that does. Um, obviously we don't want this running. Um, and all we do is in this loop, we would just send, um, basically how I've been testing it is in this loop, I'm just sending my own message, um, calling this function handle message and sending it a mocked out uh, WebSockets message. And that's pretty much that. And that's up here, which I also have commented out. Um, what else? So there's that. There's that. Um, I talked about the warnings hit and potential issues. Um, I just have a note here where this should really be using the configuration file. You could also use an environment dot env file or whatever um, but I've been using JSON files for configuration and that should use that instead of just hard-coded so something I'll fix later and then uh, while is running so this has to do with the testing so I'll go over that really quick I have this um, flag variable is running which is tr always true and the only time it changes is if you hit this uh, do this control C basically here it calls this and sets is running and false. Uh, there's other ways you can deal with that, but I don't know. That works for me. So um, I think I talked about just adding a log directory. Maybe not. But yeah, when the program starts, it creates a log directory because uh, I don't have any logs in this in here, but in production, I have a couple logs. So I'm like sending emails and I just want to verify any issues with those. Um, is running. Sorry, I talked about that talked about that so the last thing I talk about the, is this and I'm gonna actually gonna go in the normal view for this so before I was basically copying actually let me go back here so I was uh, seeing if in targets hit there's a ticker um, key and then if there's not send it to an empty object and copy it and then I was taking this target dict and uh, assigning it here. So basically it would erase the whole thing if it couldn't find the ticker. So if a new ticker came in um, that it hadn't had before, then it would erase all the other ones. And obviously you don't want to do that. So, um, and also this code was just pretty sloppy. So uh, the way I have it now isn't perfect, but um, it's okay. Like this can, this doesn't need to be its own if statement because I'm kind of doing that here as well. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll just go over it. So basically if warnings hit, um, it's looking for again, the same thing as it was before. And if it can't find the ticker and that percent, um, I'm sorry, if it can find that, uh, then it uh, returns because you already got warned. Um, same thing with the targets. That's same as it was before. And then here's where it changes. Basically, um, if the ticker is not in warnings hit, which is again up here, then it will create a empty object for that ticker um, inside the global variable. Um, and there could 
potentially be race conditions if I I don't think there would be because they're different tickers. So um I don't think that's an issue. It would have to be the same ticker that this could potentially cause an issue, but those get updated every second, so I don't see that happening. Um, at least that's how I'm thinking about it right now. So I think that's fine. Um, and then 4% up down level. So again, this is the same as it was before, except that whatever way I was keying into the property here, I'm just doing it like this, basically. So now this is definitely going to exist, and then it just um, it sets. Is that right? Yeah. Ooh, this actually might be an issue. This might not exist. Is that a problem? I'm trying to think. Well, let me it. Test program. Am I just not thinking about this right? Test. Um, A equals this. Um, B one. Um, what am I doing here? A B equals one. A C equals one. Is this error out? Let me see. Python test. Okay, good. Print. I guess I was just thinking about that incorrectly. Print A. I should have both of these now, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this will definitely exist um, at that point because it creates it here. And then it's setting that... Um, property individually there. And same thing down here, except it does it for both targets and warnings and does these separately. It does this and then this. I could probably bring this up here and do it, you know, right below. It depends how you want to organize it. And again, this could be organized uh, and refactored differently. 